Hello, this is Deacon Bob. Today we're going to be going over one of the really informative parables in the Bible. A parable is simply a story that is uh, said for uh, instructive purposes, educational purposes. And our Lord Jesus Christ really liked parables, so we're going to go over one of his parables today. But before we get started, we should really start with a prayer. So, glory to thee, O God, glory to thee, O heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, who art everywhere and fillest all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us and cleanse us from all impurity and save our souls, O good one. Amen. Okay, we're going to start by reading the parable. The parable is found in Luke uh, 15, uh, verse 11 through verse 32. And I'm going to read from uh, the Plain Text Bible, the Good News Bible, uh, for sort of an easier flow. Jesus went on to say, There was once a man who had two sons. The younger one said to him, Father, give me my share of the property now. So the man divided his property between his two sons. After a few days, the younger son sold his part of the property and left home with the money. He went to a country far away where he wasted his money with reckless living. He spent everything he had. Then a severe famine spread over that country, and he was left without a thing. He went to work for one of the citizens of that country, who sent him out to his farm to take care of the pigs. He wished he could fill himself with the bean pods the pigs ate, but no one gave him anything to eat. At last he came to his senses and said, All of my father's hired workers have more than they can eat, and here I am about to starve. I will get up and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against God and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. He was still a long way from home when his father saw him. His heart was filled with pity. He ran through his arms around his son and kissed him. Father, the son said, I have sinned against God and against you, and I am no longer fit to be called your son. But the father called to his servants, hurry, he said, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put on a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet, and then go and get the prized calf and kill him. And let us celebrate with a feast. For as the son of mine was dead, but now he is alive, he was lost, but now he's been found. And so the feasting began. In the meantime, the oldest son, or son was out in the field. On his way back, he came close to the house. He heard the music and the dancing. He called one of the servants and asked him, What's going on? Your brother has come back home, the servant said. And your father has killed the prize calf because he got back safe and sound. The older brother was so angry he would not go into the house, so his father came out and begged him to come in. But he spoke back to his father. Look, all these years I have worked for you and like a slave, and I have never disobeyed your orders. What have you given me, not even a goat for me to have a feast with my friends? But this son of yours wasted all your property of prostitutes, and then he comes back home, you kill the prize calf for him. My son, the father said. You are always here with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be happy because your brother was dead. But now he is alive. He was lost, but now he is found. Powerful parable. There are three characters in the parable. And we're going to first go over uh, and look at the character of the father. They're going to look at the two sons. 
In this parable, the Father represents God the Father. And the parable and the sons represent two instances where uh, we are lost. It's called the lost son because of the younger son going and wasting his money, but we're going to find out that the older son isn't much better off. And these are the two ways that we can distance ourselves from God, illustrated by these two uh, sons. But let's look at the father for a moment. Uh, to know the father, probably the best way is to go over what's called the Lord's Prayer. Because the Lord's Prayer is about the Father, and it can reveal things about the Father. If we look at the first line, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now when we say that, we're saying that God is our Father. That God is the person that is directing things. And we say hallowed, hallowed means holy. And holy means fit for devotion, fit all good, no all right, no evil, no wrong. And we're, we're saying, God, you are the perfect example, the perfect God, the perfect leader of the universe. And then it says, when thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's important that we understand that the creator of the world God uh, made the world and has a plan, has a will for what is good for us. And we want to follow that will. Our will sometimes is not on. It's not uh, exactly what we need. We think that we need something, but God knows more about what we need and, what we, and even what we want. And so we want his will to be done on earth rather than ours. Give us this day our daily bread. And this is not just substance to eat. This is not just bread to eat, but this is spiritual bread. Uh, guidance. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Now God is going to, be, is going to forgive. But he's only forgive, going to forgive if we have the kind of attitude of forgiveness that we need. We get forgiveness to the degree that we forgive. Okay. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from, the, from evil. And when we say that, we're asking God not to, give, not to let us get into any situation, any trial, that is beyond our capability of handling. Uh, bad times are going to come about, but the, the, the true test is, do we get through them? And then there's more uh, uh, devotion to God. We, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. And that's simply acknowledging that he has all of the glory. Uh, with regard to the Father, it says here in the very first part of the parable that uh, the younger son says, Father, give me my share of the property now. He wants his inheritance before the father dies. He wants his inheritance now. Now, I'm sure that the father tried to dissuade him, tried to say to him, wait a while. Uh, think of what you're doing and what have you. But the son had a will, had a choice that he made that he wanted to go and use his inheritance now. And the father, because the son had that strong desire to do that regardless of the situation, uh, his father gave him the inheritance. We have given free will as people, and we're free to choose the good or the bad, the easy or the difficult. And God is not going to interfere with that, because 
If we were not made with free will, when we desire to come to God, and we came to God, it has to be from our heart, from something that we want to do. Okay, now, the other thing that I want to point out is in the parable, when the son returns, it says, he was still a long way from home when his father saw him, his heart was filled with pity, and he ran and threw his arms around his son and kissed him. The son had gone out and used his money unwisely and got himself into trouble, put himself into a trial. He repented and came back home. And even before he reached home and told his father the, uh, about him being sorry, uh, the father came to him. And God the Father is like this too. If we, if we start to make the effort towards repentance, towards moving closer to God, God will come and meet us uh, halfway and uh, help us be closer to God. Okay, well that's all for this lesson. We have two more lessons on the parable where we're going to look at the two sons. But uh, our time is up right now, so we're going to uh, stop.